Welcome to the Clear to Send podcast, a podcast about wireless engineering, where we educate you on Wi-Fi technology, talk about design tips, troubleshooting, interviews, and the tools. Here are your hosts, Roel and Francois. Welcome everyone, this is Francois, your host. In this new episode of the Clear to Send podcast, we'll be talking about free space pass loss. But right before, let's talk about what happened last week in wireless. So the main piece of news for last week was HPE acquiring Cape Networks. Um, so HPE, so actually the Aruba piece of HPE uh, acquired Cape Networks. And uh, if I um, uh, will put the link to the uh, announcement in the description, if I I took out a couple of quotes from the announcement, the first one was uh, saying Cape Networks will become a part of Aruba, uh, uh, Hewlett Packard enterprise company and will expand Aruba's artificial intelligence powered networking capabilities with a sensor based service assurance solutions that gives customers a simple proactive and network agnostic tool for measuring and monitoring uh, software as a service applications and network services. So Cape Networks uh, started in 2014 in, in South Africa um, and the goal was to the goal of the company was to create a sensor that could monitor Wi-Fi a Wi-Fi network so they would install a, a sensor uh, somewhere in the network the sensor would connect to the Wi-Fi network and it would perform a, a set of tests uh, um, let's say for example like a ping test a DNS test a job box test uh, and so on just to test the performance of the Wi-Fi network we actually had um, the CEO of Cape Network in the podcast a few a few episodes back if you want to know more about the, the, the solution and um, so and actually two weeks ago or a few weeks ago we had the guys from Cisco talking about the, the similar sensor that they, they're developing um, uh, on their end so it looks like the vendors are uh, fully embracing the the, the the sensor um uh, trend right now they're trying to get as much information from the the network as possible to make the network more intelligent uh, second quote was keep network solution complements aruba net insight and together will comprehensive ai powered analytics and assurance so that customers can quickly adapt and change in changes in the user uh, different uh, devices, application, and network environments. So they're trying to make the uh, wireless network a little bit smarter and adapt itself automatically. So it's uh, it's very. I think it's very exciting for the future. Um, we're trying to get more and more data out of the network, uh, so we can automate some some uh, some processes. Uh, so I'm excited to see what's uh, what's uh, going to happen in the future with Cape and and Aruba networks. And uh, and uh, see how it goes with the uh, how it integ- integrates with the Net Insight application. Last week, Aruba organized the Atmosphere 2018. Um, I I didn't get to attend, but some of the uh, people in the community attended and wrote some blog articles about it. So uh, we've linked the different blog in the description of the podcast if you're interested to uh, know what happened and have a. Uh, a recap of the event. Another piece of news is related to the 1.1.1.1 um, IP address. Um, so this uh, this IP address used to be um, used on on the Cisco controller to configure the virtual interface, and the virtual interface was used for the captive portal. A lot of people used to think that this uh, this is a um, you know private space of IP addresses, and it, it's actually not. Um, and a company called uh, Cloudflare um, is starting to offering DNS services on the 1.1.1.1 address and 1.0.0.1 address. Um, and if you actually go on the website, you'll see uh, that they, they, they have their service offering over there. So if you're still using the 1.1.1.1 address uh, on your controllers, it's uh, time to upgrade the configuration. Cisco has advised for a little while now to start using the 192.0.2.1 address instead. Uh, so you can go ahead and, and uh, change your configura- configuration there. Last week, the uh, CWNP organized uh, 
two work groups for the CWAP and CWDP. The goal was to work on the new version of the program. Uh, so they gathered a group of experts to work on the uh, on the new versions of the AP and DP uh, certifications. And they organized chat groups where um, they would ask ask questions on Twitter, and then the experts would uh, answer. Uh, Roel actually participated to the CWDP work group. Uh, so we put the uh, the link to the chat group in the description if you're interested in in checking it out. Um, Eris Rockus lays out CBR's S opportunity, one billion by uh, 2022. Um, so this is another vendor um, ta- uh, trying to thinking a little bit uh, further down the road and how um, the different wireless technology will um will be working together in the future and this one uh aris officials have said that the combination of lt and wi-fi technologies uh, essentially creates a 5g experience be- because it allocates a wide path of bandwidth to end users uh, these two words lt and wi-fi have been largely black and white uh, they've been distinct um, um and uh so Ruckus is um, is trying to maybe merge the two technologies together. They're working uh, on a access point that would uh, support both technologies. So I think it's very um, interesting for us. Um, it means uh, that maybe as Wi-Fi engineers, we need to, uh, you know, to uh, start learning a little bit about the LTE. Uh, it seems like both technology might merge. Um, which in the, uh, you know, under the 5G, uh, more global brand. Um, and it's actually, it makes me, it makes me interested about LT more and more and wanted to learn a, a little bit, wanted to learn about LT more and more. A few years, a few weeks back, we shared a website called LTE, uh, University that, uh, where you can go to and learn about LTE. Uh, so if you're interested, you can, you can go to the, the website. We also put the link to the Aris and Ruckus announcement in the description if you want to learn more about it. To finish the weeks, um, uh, we'd like to congrat, to congratulate new CWNE. So this week we have Victor Raul George Pasillas from Mexico. I uh, became CWNE number 267 and we have uh, Ambuj Mahendra from USA becomes CWN number 268. So congr- congratulations to you guys. And um, we're waiting for the upcoming CWNEs and would be glad to congratulate them on the show as well. All right, so let's talk about the main subject for this week. Uh, we'll be talking about free space past loss. Um so free space pass loss, it's, uh, it re- represents the amount of energy that a given radio, uh, wave would loses as it travels through the air away from its source. Uh, so for us, Wi-Fi engineers, understanding free space pass loss will help us understand how far Wi-Fi signal can go. And it's also widely used by all the site service software like Ekahal, Air Magnet, uh, IB Wave, uh, Tamograph to, you know, predict, uh, the, the signal propagation. Uh, so free space pass loss is uh, actually something we can calculate um, by applying a specific uh, mathematical formula. Uh, and the mathematical formula is dependent on distance and frequency. Uh, so if you go on, on uh, Wikipedia, you can get the exact formula. Um, if we express the distance in kilometers and the frequency in uh, gigahertz, the formula tells us that the loss will be equal to 20 log 10 of the distance plus 20 log 10 of the frequency plus 92.45. So we'll see how we can apply this formula with Wi-Fi. Um, because it's dependent to the frequency and the distance, uh, first space pass loss is not specific to Wi-Fi waves. It can be applied to, uh, any other, you know, uh, uh frequencies and any other wireless technologies. Um, and if we, if we focus on Wi-Fi, um, free space pass loss pretty much refers to the amount of power Wi-Fi signal, uh, is losing as it travels away from the transmitter. 
So it could be away from the AP if the AP is transmitting or away from the client if the client is transmitting. Uh, and if we look back at the formula, we can see that this uh, first space pass loss is relative to two main components, the frequency and the distance. So we actually put uh, together a little diagram to uh, try to represent how much energy the signal is losing uh, as it travels through the air. Uh, here we're just talking about uh, a typical Wi-Fi signal traveling through the air, uh, no attenuation. Um, just we'll talk about attenuation a little later in this uh, in this episode. But for right now, we're just talking about you know the receiver um, going away from the transmitter and just. Uh, without any attention in between, just line of sight. Um, so frequency and distance. So it's going to be related to the frequency and the distance. Uh, let's talk about frequency first. So frequency, we're talking about the frequency of the radio wave. So in, in Wi-Fi 2.4 and, and 5, it can get even more specific if, if we're talking about a specific channel. So channel 1 would be, you know, 2.4, 1, 1, 2 gigahertz and and so on. Um, and uh, so the, the formula pretty much tells us that uh, the higher the frequency is, the higher the loss will be, right? So you'll get more loss in the higher frequency, 5 gigahertz, that you'll get in 2.4. Uh, this is something we we typically know. Um, so, the, the, you know, if you're thinking about audio, the bass will always travel as travel further than the the, the higher the higher um, uh, the, the treble because the bass is a lower frequency or if you're comparing AM and FM radio the AM radio goes further away than the FM radio because they use uh, lower frequencies it's kind of like the same idea here 2.4 will travel further away than the 5 gigahertz that's usually what we come on to say um, another factor is affecting how far Wi-Fi signal is traveling and this is more related to uh, receive a specific receive characteristic, right? So any any uh, um, Wi-Fi uh, uh, system will have an antenna, one antenna to receive the 2.4 frequency uh, waves, and another antenna to receive the 5 gigahertz signal. And uh, because the wavelength of the 2.4 signal is larger, the antenna will have to be larger for the 2.4 signal. And this means that the, the 2.4 receiver will have a larger receive aperture and will be able to better hear the incoming signal right so the fact that the 2.4 gigahertz uh, signal is lower and the fact that the antenna is bigger will uh, help the receiver to uh, better hear the 2.4 signal versus the 5 gigahertz signal right and so if we if we take these two elements and we go back to the free, uh, free space pass loss formula um uh, in the, the the first space pass loss formula will tell us that in the first meter, a 2.4 gigahertz signal will lose about 40 dB, right? In the first meter, we'll lose about 40 dB. Um, if we take the formula for channel one, uh, it the signal will be losing 40.09 dB, and if we if we take it for channel 11, uh, the formula tells us that we'll be losing 40.28 dB, right? So in average, we say 2.4 signal will be losing 40 dB in the first meter. In the 5 gigahertz uh, band, uh, in average, the a signal will be losing about 47 dB in the first meter. If we take channel 36, it will be losing 46.74 dB. And if we take channel 165, the, la the, the last channel in the band will be losing 47.76 uh, dB. Right, so in average we say about 47, but once again it's dependent on the frequency. So channel 165 is using a higher frequency, 5.825, versus channel 36 will be using a, a lower frequency, 5.180. And this is what we have a little uh, um, variation between the both, but in average we can say for mine, uh, 47 dB of loss in the first meter for the 5 gigahertz signal. Right, so what, what happened after the first meter? So that's when the, the distance kicks in, right? So when we're talking about the distance, we're talking about the distance uh, traveled by the, the, the Wi-Fi wave between the uh, the source, uh, so the transmitter and the receiver. Um, so uh, common, you know, common, sense, common sense tells us that it will make sense that if the signal 
is to lose power as it travels away from the source. Um, and the, the, the free space pass loss tells us exactly how much. And the free space pass loss is actually based on something called the inverse square law. And the inverse square law is uh, was developed by uh, Isaac Newton and tells us that uh, the distance from the source doubles. Um, uh, it tells us that as the distance from the source doubles, the energy is spread out over four times the area. Um, so basically this, this, uh, this uh, results in the signal losing four times its original amplitude every time the distance doubles from the source. In terms of Wi-Fi signal, um, it, we can translate that to uh, saying that the Wi-Fi signal will lose 6 dB every time the distance from the source is double, right? 6 dB, losing 6 dB is equivalent to divide the uh, amplitude of the wave by 4. Uh, so we can say that every time we double the distance from the source, we're losing an, ex an additional 6 dB, right? Um, so if you go back to the diagram we put in the description, you'll see in the first meter, for instance, for the 2.4 signal, in the first meter we'll lose 40 dB, and then after that, every time you double the distance, you lose an additional 6 dB, right? So from 1 to 2 meters, you lose an, uh, an additional 6 dB, and then from 2 to 4 meters, you lose another 6 dB, For from 4 to 8 meters, you lose another 6 dB, and so on, as you double the distance away from the source. Right, so once you know all of that, um, and you know which power uh, will be, you know, the, the the power of the signal leaving the transmitter, uh, you can calculate exactly how far the signal will go if you don't have any attenuation right before the transmitter and the, and the receiver. So that that can give us a, a little idea. Uh, actually, Nigel Bowden on his website, he um, created a little tool that will help you calculate how far the signal will go um, or how much loss will be applied to a signal. So you specify which channel you're using, you specify your uh, ARRP, uh, which is the power that the, the signal will have leaving the, 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 leaving the transmitter, and you specify the distance, and it will tell you how much loss will be applied to the, uh, to the signal. Sorry. And uh, so Nigel is pretty much using the free space pass loss in the, the free space pass loss formula in the background to tell us uh, the loss. Uh, but just to this is just to illustrate the fact that you can actually calculate that. Right in the in the real life, it's a little bit more complicated because you'll be um, you know installing APs in an environment where you have walls, uh, you have objects that will attenuate uh, the uh, signal and that will impact the way the RF wave is traveling through the air. Um, so if we're talking about introducing a, a wall in between the transceiver and the receiver, what will happen to the signal? Right, so the wall will pretty much add an extra uh, amount of loss to the signal, right? So uh, in between the transmitter and the wall, before the wall, the free space pass law free space pass loss will apply and then you the wall will add an extra attenuation specified by you know the, the the structure of the wall and then after the wall the free space pass loss will continue um, and the signal will just lose uh, amplitude according to the free space pass loss right and this uh, um, this this is pretty much what it's used what is used by uh, you know planning software uh, site server softwares to predict how far a signal will go. So every time, let's say you do your design in Ekahau and you draw a wall, every time you draw a wall, Ekahau will take this attenuation into consideration when they do the calculation of the, uh, of the uh, signal propagation. So they will apply the free space pass loss before the wall, then they will add the loss, and then they will continue applying the free space pass loss after the wall. All right, so uh, we pretty much have, if we if we just summarize a little bit, we pretty much have a difference of seven dB between the two point four and the five gig band. All right, so for a seven dB is about twice, um, um, four times 
more power, a little bit more than 6 dB is 4 times more power. So 7 dB is a little bit more than 4 times more power on the 2.4 versus the 5 gigahertz band. So if we set the, the transmit power of the access point to the, the, the same amount on the 2.4 and the 5 gig band, uh, so let's say um, uh, 20 dBm, on, so 20 dBm on, on both the 2.4 and the 5 gig band, we can expect to have four times more uh, uh, power uh, on the uh, on the 2.4 band on the 2.4 yeah on the on the receiver side we can expect to have four times more power in the 2.4 band versus the 5 gig band and if we're talking about this the size of the cell this is pretty much um, we can pretty much visualize that the 2.4 cell would be uh, almost uh, not twice as big but will extend a little bit further away than the 5 gig band Um, and if we if we look at the uh, diagram that we include in the description, you can visualize that the the cell size of the two point four uh, band uh, two point four signal will be larger than the five gig signal. If we want to try to um, have the same cell size between our two point four and the five gig radios, we can try to adjust the transmit power two point four radio. So because we have a 7 dB difference after 1 meter be between 2.4 and the, and the 5 gig signal, if we offset the transmit power of the 2.4 radio, if we decrease the transmit power of the 2.4 radio by 7 dB, we will be able to uh, offset this difference and after 1 meter we will get the same uh, signal strength at the same uh, power uh, on the 2.4 and on the 5 gigahertz band. Right, so um, if we configure our AP on the controller, we can just say, okay, the um, the 2.4 radio uh, transmit power will be 7 dB lower than the 5 gig transmit power. Right, so if we take an example, if we have 20 dBm as a transmit power on the 5 gig radio, we can just set our 2.4 a transmit 2.4 gigahertz transmit power to um, 13 dBm. Right. And this would offset the difference, and then we'll end up having the same cell size between uh, 2.4 and 5 gig radios. If you actually do that in, in, a, in a tool like Ekaho, you can visualize uh, that you can actually get uh, pretty much the same cell size between the 2.4 and the 5 gig, assuming that the antenna uh, pattern in your AP looks the same on the 2.4 and the 5 gig bands. Um, usually in, in the uh, in Wi-Fi controllers or APs, uh, we're only able to increase or decrease transmit power by an increment of 3 dB. Uh, so the 7 dB uh, usually is not uh, is not applicable, and we usually go with uh, decreasing the transmit power, the 2.4 transmit power by 6 dB, in order to do the best as we can. That's if we want to match the cell size between 2.4 and 5 gig. Um, free space pass loss is also important if we want to measure the attention of a wall, right? If you, if you want to measure the attention of the wall and then input this information into your design in, in order to make it more accurate, um, you need to think about free space pass loss. Why? If you put the, uh, so when you, when you're trying to measure the attention of a wall, what you want to do is take two measurements, one without the wall. So just measure the, uh, the line of sight, how much uh, signal is transferred between the transmitter and the receiver, and then you introduce the wall in between those two transmitter and receivers, in between the, the AP and the tool you're using to measure the signal, and you do a second measurement the same way, and then you have you have the delta. The delta is pretty much telling you the loss introduced by the wall. When you do this measurement, uh, you want to put the transmitter away from the wall as much as you can so you don't uh, end up measuring the free space pass loss uh, because we have 40 db loss in the first meter which is a lot of loss in the first meter if you place the transmitter too close to the wall um, you will pretty much end up being measuring the free space pass loss and not really the loss of the wall the loss of the wall might be lost into your measurement um, so what you want to do is you want to bring this transmitter, so the the AP using to 
to do your measurement uh, away from the wall. We usually say bring it as, as far as you can. Um, good rule of thumb is about four and five meters. Um, in some rooms, you, you won't be able to, you know, move away four or five meters away from the wall. So just move away as far as you can. Uh, and this way you'll be, uh, your, your measurement of the attention would be more accurate. Um, actually, uh, Nigel Bowden has another article on how to measure the attention of the wall. Uh, we'll put a link in the, in the, uh, show notes. Um, he has, I believe he has a link on his website and on Eka House website where he details exactly, uh, how to measure the attention of a wall. So it's accurate and you can import this loss into a cow afterwards in order to refine your design. Um, so, uh, free space pass loss, um, uh, free space pass loss is, uh, just to, to summarize in Wi-Fi free space pass loss will help us understand how far a signal will go, right? Um, it also help us understand how the different uh, 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 software, uh, site survey software works and predicts the signal propagation. In an outdoor environment, uh, and if you have line of sight with your, uh, with your AP, it can help us, it can help you understand how far the signal will, will go. Um, it also help us understand the difference between the 2.4 frequency band and the 5 frequency band since the free space passes is related to frequency. If we apply the, uh, I would, I would invite you to apply the frequency, the, the formula to different frequencies. So you can see, you know, how, uh, how the, the, the you can see the actual difference of, uh, power loss in between the different frequencies and you can experience it by yourself. Uh, so understand free space pass loss, help us understand a little bit the difference. Uh, between the 2.4 and the 5 gig band and how the signal will just travel through the air. Um, uh, so just to complement this podcast episode, uh, I've actually written an article on, on my blog and sharing a couple of diagrams on the free space pass loss to better understand uh, the concept. Um, so feel free to, to uh, take a look at it. Uh, it's on uh, samfirenetworks.com slash blog. Um, the article is called Free Space Pass Loss Diagrams. We'll put a link into the, the show notes on the clear to website. If you go to clear uh you'll see uh, all the diagrams as well. If we've added the diagrams, the same ones. Um, and you can also feel free to, to, to use them uh, for, to use them, to, to use them if you need them, uh, if you need to show uh, to show it to someone. Um, if you want to, if you have any ideas to improve them, just let me know and, uh, we'll, we'll do so. Um, I'm always welcoming ideas, uh, or touch ups. And, uh, by the way, I want to thank, uh, Glenn Gate for giving me a few, a few tips to, uh, on how to improve the diagrams already. Um, so yeah. And if you have any, um, other ideas of, uh, thing to you would like to see in diagrams or the Wi-Fi concept, concept you'll see you would like to see in diagrams. Just let me know. Um, I like to I like diagrams to visualize a concept, trying to break break down how they work. Uh, so let me know and I can try to work on something. Right. Uh, in the meantime, uh, head over to the show notes if you want to see all the links of the news we talked about this week. If you want to learn more about free space pass loss, uh, let us, let us know how we do on, uh, on iTunes. Um, and then we'll come back next week. We, with a brand new episode on the click to send podcast. Thank you guys. Bye.